Good day, New York. It's just about 6 o'clock on this Monday, July 10th. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you. I'm Tushani Whitlow. Let's talk about that weather because it's going to be another hot, muggy day out. Well, temperatures expected to be in the high 80s. Also this morning, recovery begins after severe weather brought flooding, killing one man in Highland Falls, New York, damaging property and closing roads. Governor Kathy Hochul has declared a state of emergency for Orange County. One suspect is facing a number of charges, including murder, after a shooting spree over the weekend that took the life of a man and injured several others. Police say the suspect randomly fired a gun while riding a scooter through Brooklyn and Queens. One energy drink is concerning lawmakers. They're now called, they're calling on the FDA to open an investigation. We'll tell you about their concerns and about the YouTube influencer who owns the beverage company. But first, let's get a check of that weather with Mike Woods. Mike, good morning. What can folks expect? Good morning. Well, things are going to start to improve as far as the weather is concerned, but the damage is done from the flooding rains that we've already dealt with over the weekend. Mainly the lower Hudson Valley getting the brunt of that uh, heavy rain. It's now pushing up into New England, but there's still some showers left over for you in places like Dutchess County. It's just about to pull away from Putnam County. Brookfield seeing some heavy showers. Same thing for you in New Milford as you now head over into Connecticut and Fairfield and Litchfield counties here over also toward uh, Torrington. Some pretty heavy showers. And then as you head down to the south and east, uh, yeah, out on the east end of Long Island, there have been some pretty decent showers that have come through. At this point, nothing uh, that's warned as far as flooding rains are concerned in that location, but still the potential for some localized flooding, ponding, things like that could happen there, as well as up the Hudson Valley. Uh, Dutchess and Ulster counties also have some uh, flash flood warning, warnings that are still in effect for you, but we're starting to see the watches drop out around the tri-state because there is that potential for more flooding rains out there, but it does look like things are improving. 70 right now Central Park. There's lots of moisture in the air. This is the area of low pressure, which is helping to ring it out, but it's going to be heading up into New England. With that being the case, things do get better as the day goes on. High goes up to 83. Uh, this is a warm, steamy day, but tomorrow gets uh, hot and humid, and it's going to stay that way, but hopefully quite dry for you on Tuesday and Wednesday as well. All right, let's get over to Inez Rosales, who's got lots to talk about with all this rain that's come through. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. A lot of road closures, Dutchess County, Putnam County, Northern Westchester, as well as the rails. We have a lot of suspensions. Newburgh Beacon starting off with the ferries. No service this morning. Amtrak suspended between New York and Albany. Metro North has suspensions. The Wasaic branch between Wasaic and Harlem Valley Wingdale and the Hudson line between Crow and Harmon and Poughkeepsie. We actually have some pictures showing us some of that damage I'm hearing about. It'll be at least that close to Monday. You could see not only are the tracks flooded out, we have trees, a lot of debris, mud all over the tracks. So not only does this need to subside and the tracks need to be cleared away, but they also need to be inspected, make sure they're safe. So that's why you have so many clothes. Uh, suspensions there with the rails this morning. Bus service, they're trying to set that up with the Wasaic branch. As far as the roads, the Palisades close both directions between 14 and 9W up to 15. The Bear Mountain Bridge closed both ways because a lot of the roads that lead to the Bear Mountain Bridge have been damaged or there's a lot of debris, fallen trees. The Taconic both ways close between Route 6, Westchester, Putnam Line. And don't be surprised if a lot of the roads, especially secondary tertiary roads, are closed around the area. So if you're heading out, budget some extra time. Tashani, back to you. Inez, thank you. Now let's talk about the heavy rains that soaked the tri-state area, including Orange County. That's where Governor Kathy Hochul declared a state of emergency. That's also where one person reportedly drowned in Highland Falls due to the floodwaters. Let's check in with Robert Moses. He joins us live from Highland, New York, with the latest. And Robert, the road you're on right now, the rain battered. That's for sure, Tashani. We have quite literally come to the end of the road here in Highlands. The aptly named Storm King Highway has been quite simply washed away. There's probably a 50-yard gulf between where we stand and the beginning of the road on the other side. And you can tell we've been watching this process. The dirt beneath the road continues to give way this morning, so it may not be finished collapsing. The county executive here says the flooding in Orange County has cost at least one woman her life. North of the city, the rains came and would not relent. The water got so deep that car tires were no longer visible. While Orange County bore the brunt of the inundation, Rockland County was not spared. Emergency personnel had to rescue an elderly man by boat from a home in Stony Point. Also in Stony Point, Cindy Byers could only watch helplessly. The water just came up and the uh, brook overflowed. 
surrounded the houses. It washed away my driveway. That's out, down near the garage. You can see it all piled up. Governor Kathy Hochul declared a state of emergency in Orange County. Floodwaters inundated places like Fort Montgomery and Cornwall. Now that the rains have relented, the cleanup begins. Byers told us that her family and friends promised to be there first thing this morning to help her. I know the basement's probably full of water, so it's probably about five and a half foot of water down there. I just hope it didn't affect the living area on the first floor. And this is a beautiful shot of the waterfall here. It's beautiful on one hand, but awe-inspiring and frightening on the other because the force of this water is precisely what washed the highway away last night. In fact, as we were driving here, there was one man driving in a Jeep right in front of us, and he said, uh, you might not want to go much further. And boy, was he right, because at this point, clearly, there is no more road left. A little bit more now on that fatality here in Orange. Orange County. The county executive says this woman in her mid-30s died as she and her family were trying to escape from their home during these incredible floodwaters. The cleanup here is estimated to have cost somewhere, excuse me, the damage is estimated to be somewhere in the tens of millions of dollars, and the cleanup will take weeks, if not months. Tashani, back to you. Robert, thank you. Unbelievable. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. And this morning, cleaning up after major flooding that claimed one woman's life, the intense rainfall that left roads and cars underwater and damaged homes. Looking live from Mobile 2 this morning, live team coverage as we track current conditions on the roads and more. Good morning on this Monday, July 10th. I'm Mary Calvi. And I'm Chris Raggy. Welcome to CBS 2 News this morning. We remain on yellow alert this morning. Let's get right to Elise Finch and your first alert forecast. Six o'clock right Right now. Good morning. We are on yellow alert through the morning commute because we are still seeing some downpours, although hour by hour we are seeing fewer of them, and that is good news. But the yellow alert again references the downpours that are still possible north and east of New York City and the residual flooding that is uh, affecting so many communities. So we are continuing to see the flood alerts uh, dwindle. That is good news. Right now, though, we still have a flash flood warning for Dutchess County, so that is still in effect until 8 a.m. So we are watching that. We do have some river flooding in New Jersey, and uh, this is your radar. It shows you the heaviest rain. Most of it has pushed into Connecticut. So we're watching uh, some cells here in uh, Fairfield County, Connecticut. So we do have some moderate to heavy rain there and also some additional uh, heavy rain that's just starting to bloom a bit here across parts of Long Island. As you look, you can see around South Jamesport. So we do have still have a few communities where we're concerned with the downpours this morning. Lots of things that could slow you down. So you do want to grab that umbrella before heading out the door. 84 degrees, the forecast high for today with a slight chance of afternoon rain and muggy conditions, even if you don't see another drop. With that, I'll send it back to you. At least thank you, 6 to 1. Let's get to first alert traffic. So many trouble spots out there this morning. Guys, Stanier. That's right, Mary. Starting in Rockland County, the Palisades in State Parkway closed in both directions between exits 14 and 15 due to flooding and a partial road collapse in Stony Point. Also, Route 9W closed in both directions near Storm King Mountain. Route 210 is closed with down power lines across the river in Yorktown Heights. The Taconic shut down in both directions near 202 due to flooding. Problems for Metro North this morning. Service suspended on the Hudson Line between Tarrytown and Poughkeepsie due to track damage from the storms. Tickets will be cross-honored on the Harlem Line. Also, the Wasaic Branch suspended between Wasaic and Harlem Valley, Wingdale due to flooding. This is also affecting Amtrak service between New York City and Albany. Alternate side parking is in effect today citywide. Chris, back to you. Guy, thank you. And our live team coverage of the weather impact continues now. CBS News and Ian Maldonado is live in Mobile 2 monitoring conditions on the roads as people get ready for the morning commute. Our Elijah Westbrook live with more impact and some of the dramatic images from Sunday. Let's begin with you, Elijah. That's right, Chris. Well, I can tell you it's an absolute mess out this way. It's not looking so good. I want to step out of the way so you can really get a sense of just how deep this water is. So right now we are live on Old Yorktown Road. This is in uh, Shrub Oak here in Westchester County, uh, where you'll notice flooding literally as soon as you get off the Taconic Parkway, which, which is right down the road from where we're standing. If I had to guess, uh, the water is about maybe 
six to seven inches at this point, and we're watching uh, throughout the morning as cars try to navigate through this roadway here. It's a little calm at the moment. I think people are getting the memo that this road is not looking so good, but we know that Westchester County, go ahead and take a look, isn't the only uh, impacted area. Dramatic scenes like this here were common yesterday evening over in Rockland and Orange Counties, which are considered to be among some of the worst. Uh, that area essentially turned into a rushing river. Uh, the fast moving rain left cars submerged underwater in places like Thayer Road at West Point, which saw almost eight inches of rainfall. Some of the highest totals in the tri state area. The weather was so bad yesterday, the Orange County executive says a woman in her mid 30s died after trying to evacuate her home in Highland Falls. She and her dog were crossing where her car was parked, which was a flood of a river, and she walked across and lost her footing. I'm trying to respond to people that are trapped. Their house is in danger of either washing away, collapsing, or elderly people were evacuated from one of the nursing homes here. Now, also in Rockland County, that part of town at this park near Lowland Hill Road in Stony Point, crews rescued a man by boat. Officials also say six hikers were rescued at nearby Bear Mountain, including a child who was taken to the hospital with a head injury. And water surrounded the Shabab of Stony Point Synagogue. As you can probably see, it came right up to the windows. But we want to take you back out here live where we're watching uh, some cars try to navigate uh, through this flood water here. Uh, there is a uh, SUV that's uh, probably a little bit off frame here. It's now reversing because it's seeing that uh, it, it can't pass through uh, at, during this time. So safety is especially important today as you drive around portions of the area. Again, you may not notice how deep that water is until you're actually in it. So certainly exercise caution this morning as you go wherever you need to go today. That's the very latest here in Westchester County. I'm Elijah Westbrook, CBS 2 News. Elijah, thank you. 604 heavy rains causing flooding and washouts on some area roadways in Rockland County especially hit hard. CBS 2's Zania Maldonado was in Mobile 2 on the Palisades in Zania. How does it look out there right now? I know it's been a mess. Well, Chris and Mary, good morning. Right now, I want to show you we're driving along Route 9W near Iona Island. And if you take a look, you can see there is a lot of debris. We just hit this right now. It looks like portions of the roadway actually came up and it's mixed in with some tree branches and it's blocked off. Um, there's no cars um, allowed to drive on here. Um, at all. This actually looks pretty bad. And there's also, you can't see it right now from where we're at, but there is a lot of runoff that we've been coming across of, coming across this morning as well. And just to recap, uh, when you last checked in with us, we showed you that crews were picking up down power lines along Route 210. That was in Stony Point. Um, we also showed you earlier exit 14 off the Palisades Parkway was shut down. That was from exit 14 to Long Mountain Traffic Circle. So if you're going to be out and about on your way this morning in this area, make sure to leave plenty of time because we are coming across a lot of different road closures, debris, uh, debris along the roads this morning as well. Now, overnight, New York State Police urging motorists to avoid the Palisades Parkway entirely, specifically Long Mountain Circle, the Bear Mountain Bridge, and Route 6 due to major flooding throughout Orange and Rockland County. We're going to continue to monitor the road conditions throughout the morning for you. But for now, that is the latest live from Mobile 2. Zania Maldonado, CBS 2 News. Zania, thank you. We'll be following the impact of flooding all morning. Stay with CBS 2 for more live team coverage. We'll check back in with Elise in just a few moments. This is CBS 2 News This Morning. And this morning, cleaning up after major flooding that claimed one woman's life, the entire rainfall that left roads and cars underwater and damaged homes. Looking live from Mobile 2 this morning, live team coverage as we track current conditions on the roads and more. Good morning on this Monday, July 10th. I'm Mary Calvi. And I'm Chris Raggy. Welcome to CBS 2 News this morning. We remain on yellow alert this morning. Let's get right to Elise Finch and your first alert forecast. Six o'clock right now. Good morning. We are on yellow alert through the morning commute because we are still seeing some downpours, although hour by hour we are seeing fewer of them, and that is good news. But the yellow alert, again, references the downpours that are still possible north and east of New York City and the residual flooding that is uh, affecting so many communities. So we are continuing.
to see the flood alerts uh, dwindle. That is good news. Right now, though, we still have a flash flood warning for Dutchess County, so that is still in effect until 8 a.m. So we are watching that. We do have some river flooding in New Jersey, and uh, this is your radar. It shows you the heaviest rain. Most of it has pushed into Connecticut. So we're watching uh, some cells here in uh, Fairfield County, Connecticut. So we do have some moderate to heavy rain there and also some additional uh, heavy rain that's just starting to bloom a bit here across parts of Long Island. As you look, you can see around South Jamesport. So we do have still have a few communities where we're concerned with the downpours this morning. Lots of things that could slow you down. So you do want to grab that umbrella before heading out the door. 84 degrees, the forecast high for today with a slight chance of afternoon rain and muggy conditions, even if you don't see another drop. With that, I'll send it back to you. At least thank you, 6 to 1. Let's get to first alert traffic. So many trouble spots out there this morning. Guy Stanier. That's right, Mary. Starting in Rockland County, the Palisades in State Parkway closed in both directions between exits 14 and 15 due to flooding and a partial road collapse in Stony Point. Also, Route 9W closed in both directions near Storm King Mountain. Route 210 is closed with down power lines across the river in Yorktown Heights. The Taconic shut down in both directions near 202 due to flooding. Problems for Metro North this morning. Service suspended on the Hudson Line between Tarrytown and Poughkeepsie due to track damage from the storms. Tickets will be cross-honored on the Harlem Line. Also, the Wasaic Branch suspended between Wasaic and Harlem Valley Wingdale due to flooding. This is also affecting Amtrak service between New York City and Albany. Alternate side parking is in effect today citywide. Chris, back to you. Guy, thank you. And our live team coverage of the weather impact continues now. CBS News and Ian Maldonado is live in Mobile 2 monitoring conditions on the roads as people get ready for the morning commute. Our Elijah Westbrook live with more impact and some of the dramatic images from Sunday. Let's begin with you, Elijah. That's right, Chris. Well, I can tell you it's an absolute mess out this way. It's not looking so good. I want to step out of the way so you can really get a sense of just how deep this water is. So right now we are live on Old Yorktown Road. This is in uh, Shrub Oak here in Westchester County, uh, where you'll notice flooding literally as soon as you get off the Taconic Parkway, which, which is right down the road from where we're standing. If I had to guess, uh, the water is about maybe six to seven inches at this point, and we're watching uh, throughout the morning as cars try to navigate through this roadway here. It's a little calm at the moment. I think people are the memo that this road is not looking so good but we know that Westchester County go ahead and take a look isn't the only uh, impacted area dramatic scenes like this here were common yesterday evening over in Rockland and Orange counties which are considered to be among some of the worst uh, that area essentially turned into a rushing river uh, the fast moving rain left cars submerged underwater in places like Thayer Road at West Point which saw almost eight inches of rainfall some of the highest totals in the tri-state area the weather was so bad yesterday Yesterday, the Orange County executive says a woman in her mid 30s died after trying to evacuate her home in Highland Falls. She and her dog were crossing where her car was parked, which was a flood of a river, and she walked it and lost her footing. I'm trying to respond to people that are trapped. Their house is in danger of either washing away, collapsing, or elderly people were evacuated from one of the nursing homes here. Now, also in Rockland County, that part of town at this park near Lowland Hill Road in Stony Point, crews rescued a man by boat. Officials also say six hikers were rescued at nearby Bear Mountain, including a child who was taken to the hospital with a head injury. And water surrounded the Shabab of Stony Point Synagogue. As you can probably see, it came right up to the windows. But we want to take you back out here live where we're watching uh, some cars try to navigate uh, through this flood water here. Uh, there is a uh, SUV that's uh, probably a little bit off frame here. It's now reversing because it's seeing that uh, it, it can't pass through uh, at, during this time. So safety is especially important today as you drive around portions of the area. Again, you may not notice how deep that water is until you're actually in it. So certainly exercise caution this morning as you go wherever you need to go today. That's the very latest here in Westchester County. I'm Elijah Westbrook, CBS 2 News. Elijah, thank you. 604 heavy rains causing flooding and washouts on some area roadways in Rockland County. County especially hit hard. CBS 2 Zania Maldonado was in Mobile 2 on the Palisades in Zania. How does it look out there right now? I know it's been a mess. Well, Chris and
Mary, good morning. Right now, I want to show you we're driving along Route 9W near Iona Island. And if you take a look, you can see there is a lot of debris. We just hit this right now. It looks like portions of the roadway actually came up and it's mixed in with some tree branches and it's blocked off. Um, there's no cars um, allowed to drive on here. Um, at all. This actually looks pretty bad. And there's also, you can't see it right now from where we're at, but there is a lot of runoff that we've been coming across of, coming across this morning as well. And just to recap, uh, when you last checked in with us, we showed you that crews were picking up down power lines along Route 210. That was in Stony Point. Um, we also showed you earlier Exit 14 off the Palisades Parkway was shut down. That was from Exit 14 to Long Mountain Traffic Circle. So if you're going to be out and about on your way this morning in this area, make sure to leave plenty of time because we are coming across a lot of different road closures, debris, uh, debris along the roads this morning as well. Now overnight, New York State Police urging motorists to avoid the Palisades Parkway entirely, specifically Long Mountain Circle, the Bear Mountain Bridge, and Route 6 due to major flooding throughout Orange and Rockland County. We're going to continue to monitor the road conditions throughout the morning for you. But for now, that is the latest live from Mobile 2. Zania Maldonado, CBS 2 News. Zania, thank you. We'll be following the impact of flooding all morning. Stay with CBS 2 for more live team coverage. We'll check back in with Elise in just a few moments. Now, New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News this morning. Happening right now at 6 o'clock, the aftermath of a flash flood emergency and the threat today is still not over. The relentless rainfall hitting the Hudson Valley particularly hard. States of emergency already declared, including one in Orange County. At least one person has been killed in these storms. A woman in her 30s was swept away by the floodwaters. Dozens more have been rescued in what has been described as an all-hands-on-deck effort. Meanwhile, a major impact on the morning commute. Local bridges have collapsed. Part of roadways have been washed away and train service is also being impacted. We have team coverage for you this morning. Of course, Tom Negevin and Janice Yu are standing by. Heather is watching our ongoing road closures. We do begin with meteorologist Danny Beckstrom. Danny, uh, rain is still falling in some areas this morning. Still falling in spots, Michelle, but the radar in general looking so much better. That Thank being you. said, the flooding threat far from over. It'll take a while for this flood water to recede. In New York City, low 70s with low clouds, but the radar is dry. And in general, things are much improved this morning from even when the newscast started. If 430. A quick radar tour for you. Where we are still seeing a flash flood warning in effect is eastern Dutchess County, but that rain is almost gone. We are drying out just some light rain falling now through Putnam, through Westchester. Rain has wrapped up in the same story for Orange County, for Rockland County. Thank goodness after some areas picked up five to eight inches over the past 24 hours. For Suffolk County on Long Island through it looks like West Hampton and over through Bridgehampton, we are still seeing some scattered showers fall. And as we zoom out, the flood threat continues for areas shaded in green under a flood watch the red here that's your flash flood warning but from here our rain chances do taper off throughout the day we're starting in the upper 60s low 70s we'll end up in the low 80s today but you notice it's a mix of sun and clouds with only isolated rain chances and tomorrow we can drop those from the forecast i'll have the full forecast and uh, show you the future cast coming up heather yeah, and danny we have this commuter alert going through westchester putnam county because of all of this flooding all those uh those squares that you see, those red squares, that's flooding ongoing. And in Rockland County, the same situation there. Palisades Parkway, both ways between exits 14 and 15, a partial road collapse. We're hearing that chunks of the roadway missing, so we do have all lanes closed down. I-95 express lane south of Route 4, we do have an accident, so we have all lanes closed as you come off the George Washington Bridge south of Route 4. And the outer bridge crossing Staten Island bound, we do have a stall that has been uh, reported there, and you can see again that closure coming off the George Washington Bridge alternate side of the street parking rules are in effect. Mike, over to you. Heather and Danny, what a mess. Thank you. Now at 602, some of the worst flooding has been in Orange County, a state of emergency in effect there this morning. Rockley County also hit hard as well. I would just news reporter Tom Negevin is near Stony Point. And Tom, you know, when you left the newsroom this morning, you were planning to head uh, to a certain area, but you couldn't even get there is my understanding because of what we see behind you, all these road closures. Yeah. 
Right, we got as far as we could, Mike. We got to exit 14 on Palisades Parkway, and that is as far as anyone is getting today. And folks have been checking in. Commuters have been keeping an eye on this. Uh, the way we can tell is we're not seeing as many of them as we normally would on a morning such as this. Although traffic started to pick up here, and some traffic moving southbound on the parkway right now as uh, work crews, like the guys who've been toiling behind us all morning long, get the alternates and some of the side roads open again. So much to update people on from overnight. Uh, such a dramatic scene in Orange and Rockland counties, states of emergency, people without power. Although the power outage situation much improved from last night, we're being told a couple of thousand people still without power at the moment. This is video out of Highland Falls from overnight. The heavy rain spawning extreme, and we mean extreme flooding. We're talking about descriptions of tidal waves driving boulders into homes, causing evacuations, flooding cars, swamping roads. Uh, dozens of rescues. Governor Hochul declaring that state of emergency just after nine last night. A woman in her 30s did lose her life, lost in the floodwaters while trying to evacuate her home. Two others made it out of there safely. I had to help ambulances get in here. A number of them had to be turned away because of cars that were abandoned or were stuck. So unless you're a first responder, don't come here. Don't come here. That's the advice. Unless you're a first responder, uh, find yourself another way around. We're seeing a lot more movement by uh, work crews here as they work to get more of these roadways open. The cleanup in some locales, though, could take weeks, uh, not days. Uh, we're talking about uh, an ongoing flood threat, ongoing flood warnings this morning, and a lot of work to be done. Damage already being estimated in the tens of millions of dollars, and we're just beginning to see, really, the beginning of this. Live from Rockland County, Tom Megan, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. In some areas, the water is still rising. Thank you so much, Tom. That's how flooding works. As Heather has been mentioning, the flooding led to damage, major damage, on some Metro North train tracks, and that has meant service disruptions this morning. Eyewitness News reporter Janice you live in Terrytown with that part of our coverage. Good morning, Janice. Good morning, Michelle. Yeah, the rain has cleared up, so hopefully crews will be able to continue to work to clear up some of that debris. But, you know, the uh, suspensions remain in place, and it's because of this. Take a look at these pictures that the MTA uh, sent us. There is a tremendous amount of water on the tracks. It's hard to even see the tracks at some parts because of just how high that water level is. There's also a lot of debris, things like branches and mud on the tracks as well. We've also learned the MTA has moved the suspension on Metro North by four stations. So the suspension now runs from Croton Harmon to Poughkeepsie. Now, uh, the MTA suggests people work from home today if at all possible. Now, if that's not doable, people should travel to the Croton Harmon station service or take the Harlem line service at Southeast Croton Falls or other stations along that line. And Amtrak riders also impact Yet those who are traveling between New York City and Albany. The uh, Amtrak has been tweeting overnight all the trains that will not be running today. The best thing you can do at this point is to just double check your reservation. Make sure you're checking online or call Amtrak to figure out if your train is running and if it isn't and you already have a reservation, how you can um, possibly push that to another day. Now, the MTA says the Metro North suspension will be in place throughout the rest of today. And again, this all depends on uh, when crews are able to get this all cleaned up so that the trains can start running safely again. So at this point, it's not clear when trains will be running on a normal schedule. Live in Terrytown, Janice Hugh, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Janice, thank you so much. And remember, you can get updates on the forecast and all of these changing road conditions. Uh, when we're not on air, go to abc7ny.com or download the free abc7ny app. Coming up on Right now in the PIX11 morning news at 6 o'clock, one person killed after flash flooding sweeps through Orange and Rockland counties just north of the city. We're live at the very latest on the conditions this morning. Plus, remembering the 86-year-old victim of a shooting spree from over the weekend, the 25-year-old suspect now in custody as people in the Bronx gather to pay tribute to a beloved pillar of their community. And U.S. Marshals in Jersey City shooting and killing a man who police sources say was a suspect wanted for a gruesome murder in Florida. The News at 6 starts right now. Live from 42nd Street, this is the PIX11 Morning News. 
All right, everybody, good morning to you on this Monday, July 10th, as we take a sweeping shot across the city. Much different scene than what we felt and saw late last night with that heavy rain. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. we got a lot to get to. I'm Dan Manorino. And I'm Hazel Sanchez. And, of course, you're never more than 10 minutes from traffic and weather. We've got Alex Lee standing by, taking a look at your commute, seeing if that horrible weather overnight affects your commute this mm -hmm. morning. But first, mm -hmm. let's check in with meteorologist Byron Miranda. Yeah, uh, yeah guys, uh, torrential, buckets mm -hmm. of rain. The dew points were so low. Look at this. Uh, if you, you're thinking, well, did the city get some rain? Yeah, but look at the seventh in Orange County where all that flooding. There was flooding also on the lower Hudson, right? It's almost eight inches of rain fell in a matter of hours. Five inches in Montgomery, Peekskill three and a quarter. But if you go from Jersey, Newark through LaGuardia to the Central Park, a quarter inch to an inch. So it wasn't bad for the city or close to the city. But when you got away from the city north and west, my goodness, uh, just awful, right? Flooding rains. That's over. I can say, say to everyone, that's over. A little bit of rain now, still going to Connecticut, but everybody else is going to be able to dry out. Now, there is a chance of a thunderstorm later today. Low 70s at this hour. By 1 p.m., 81 degrees, 81 degrees. When I come back, Alex, the humidity levels are dropping, but the temperatures are going up again. Now to you. Byron, thank you so much for that. So we've got a lot going on over here, of course, uh, following the storm. So the Bronx River Parkway, looking live right now at Main Street. We have tons of flooding. You can see how deep that water is on the roadway. Closures to be expected up and down the Bronx River Parkway as a result. We do have confirmation of a closure then again further north, both directions through Bronxville. Also have something happening on the Hutch here southbound. We're seeing this delay coming down through exit 9 Mill Road just past this point. We believe there's an incident working. And then the Palisades Parkway also closed because of flooding between exit 14 Willow Grove Road and the end of the parkway essentially. And again, that closure in both directions. We'll have much more on the aftermath of the storm coming up on how it affects your commute. But for now, Dan, I'll send it back to you. Talk about that right now, Alex, because some residents in our area, like Alex was just talking about, this is what they are waking up to. Just take a look at these wild images creating such a messy commute this morning after those torrential floodwaters swept through parts of Rockland and Orange counties. Look at this, damaging these roads, suspending some rail service. One person was also killed in the midst of all of this. Pick up Michelle Ross is right off the Palisades Parkway in Stony Point with much more this morning. And Michelle, I understand some of the parts of the highway even just washed away completely. Yeah, that's right, Dan. And as you know, the Palisades Parkway runs through both New York and New Jersey. So this is a major commuter route, and it's already causing disruptions in the morning ride to work. Now, you may have seen some cars behind me. They are being directed to get off of the highway. We are at exit 14 here, and it is blocked all the way up a few miles up until the long uh, mountain traffic circle. Now, in these images from yesterday show how severe the flooding was because of the rain. Officials tell PIX11 that some drivers were forced to sleep in their cars after washouts throughout Rockland and Orange counties. And some sad news to share. A young woman in her mid-30s was killed while trying to leave her house. She and her dog got swept away. Her dog is okay, and so is the rest of her family. A house also floated away, and officials believe it belonged to that woman. Now, another homeowner says that her house has only flooded three times in the 45 years she's lived here, during Hurricane Sandy, during Hurricane Irene, and now. This is the worst one. I just watched it as it came up on my front lawn. Then I just packed some clothes, and I got in my car, and I sat out on the road. And within 20 minutes, the water came around the house. And officials add that local fire departments had to save six hikers and also dozens of drivers from the Palisades. And tens of millions of uh, dollars are expected in damage. We're live in Stony Point. Michelle Ross, PIX11 News. All right, Michelle, thank you so much. It's six It is 6 a.m. and we are following breaking news for you. Flash floods turn deadly as storms tear through parts of the Hudson Valley. Roads are closed. People are trapped in their homes. And there is major damage and destruction in Orange and Rockland County. We have special Team 12 coverage for you on this Monday, July 10th. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Salvadorini. And I'm Shannon Lanier. We are on Storm Watch this morning, tracking the chaos of those storms and everything that it left behind and what's next for our region. So let's head straight to meteorologist Matt Hammer for the very latest. Matt. Yeah, and the what's next is happening right now. That's that the drier weather is pushing in. We actually have even breaks of sunshine developing some good signs that at least it doesn't get even worse. And I mean, I don't know how it could get even worse than some of the flooding that we had yesterday in about a 12 hour period. We got about 75 percent, 80 percent of the entire summer's worth of rain for parts of the Hudson Valley. You can still see some low clouds over the Hudson River and towards the Mario Cuomo Bridge, but a brightening sky with breaks of sunshine. We'll have breaks of sunshine developing across the Hudson Valley through the morning. A couple of spotty light showers in eastern Dutchess and Putnam counties. There can still be residual ponding of water pretty much anywhere across the Hudson Valley as we go throughout the morning. Some of the hardest hit areas that we focused on, which still in part remain inaccessible this morning over towards Highland Falls over towards the West Point area, close to 10 inches of rain, at least with radar estimations. Sometimes the estimated rainfall amounts from radar could be slightly above what actually fell. But by slightly, we mean these are probably still close to about eight to nine inches of rain that fell in that 12 hour span yesterday over towards the Pomona area. More than six inches of rain estimated by radar. And that's where we have News 12's Jade Nash with an update on those conditions there for us this morning. Jade, good morning. What are you seeing so far as we as conditions start to brighten up this morning here across the Hudson Valley. Good morning to everyone in the studio. We're here near exit 14 on the Palisades Interstate Parkway, where the road is closed near exit 14. Earlier, crews were seen putting out flares near the road closure. Drivers are being slowly diverted off of exit 14, as we can see. One driver we spoke with says this closure is definitely going to disrupt his journey today. One car also pulled over asking us how to get back on the road. As we learn more info, we'll bring it to you. But for now, News 12's Ben Nandy is tracking damage up in Orange County. We're right outside of Cornwall on Hudson at Trout Brook Road and Route 32. And Route 32 is blocked north of Trout Brook, and here's why. And we have several scenes like that in town. Um, just on Trout Brook Road, about a mile east of here, there's another part of the road that has collapsed. And you have these roads blocked going into Highland Falls, which is where people are stranded right now. The county executive is seeking uh, emergency assistance from the state to help clean up from this storm. But at the moment, if you're a commuter, I don't know what to tell you. It's going to be hard to get around. And um, it, it has been deadly so far. And we're going to keep an eye on this uh, throughout the morning because there are still floods. There's still water dripping off the mountain, causing more floods and things like this one. Ben Nandy, News 12. Ben, thank you. 6.03 in the morning, we want to talk about some of those road closures, specifically flooding, closing an Orange County roadway. It drew 32 in both directions here. That's at Trout Brook Road, where Ben was just there. So, of course, stay with News 12 for live updates from that area. On to Dutchess County we go, because there's also issues there. So if we can advance the map and show you what's happening there. The Taconic Parkway North shut in LaGrange. Flooding there just south of Baird State Park. Stay, of course, with News 12 and News12.com as we now make our way to show you exactly what's happening there. Uh, the flooding on the Taconic North and that roadway closed. So many weather-related issues and closures throughout the morning. That's why we are continuing to follow that for you. Of course, updates throughout the morning on that. But we do have a sad update when it comes to this storm. And one person is confirmed dead in Orange County after trying to escape their home during the floods. We're hearing that a woman from Highland Falls reportedly in her 30s sadly died. The county executive Steve Newhouse has declared a state of emergency because of severe flooding. Right now, believe it or not, we are told that Every road into Highland Falls is blocked or washed out, and emergency first responders are simply unable to get there. People, we're told, are trapped in their homes further west. This is Route 32 in Highland Mills, where part of the roadway collapsed during the flooding. We have roads that are washed out. We have power lines that are down, and uh, we have roads that are unpassable, and we have cars that are uh, either floating or submerged. Newhouse says those who are visiting Highland Falls are now stranded and the county is working to find hotels for people who were stuck in that area. And that state of emergency does remain in effect in Orange County. That's why the governor is calling on New Yorkers to stay alert during these recovery efforts.
So it is a dangerous situation. All people should be paying attention uh, to the warnings. Their cell phone alerts will be going off in the dangerous areas. And please just, we'll get through this. It's going to be a rough 24 to 48 hours. But the most important thing is I want people to be safe, safe at home. The governor also says roads and bridges in Orange and Rockland counties will be tested by state crews before they can reopen to ensure they were not compromised by the storms. In Rockland County, 40 people had to be rescued from the Palisades during the flooding. Now, this is a look at the scene in Stony Point where cars were left stranded in a parking lot as water levels quickly rose. The town supervisor says the heavy rains caused the Cedar Brook stream to overflow, resulting in damage to the area near Route 210. Approximately 20 people had to been evacuated from their homes down in the Lowland Hill Park area. We had a um, rescue team from Piermont come in and help rescue an elderly neighbor whose property was severely flooded. Now, the town supervisor, Jim Monahan, says that you should stay off the road as crews wait for the stream to subside. All right, time now for another check at the forecast with Storm Watch Team Meteorologist Matt Hammer. We know you got us covered. Yeah, and we're at the point now where it's really all about the residual impacts from all of yesterday's flooding. The, any additional rain? Not much throughout the rest of the day, just light and spotty. But still, all the issues we had yesterday will continue to be lingering issues as we continue on this Monday. So take a look outside towards the Hudson River right now. You can still see a fair amount of low clouds. Those clouds trying to clear out for some breaks of sunshine. And we will have a partly sunny to mostly cloudy rest of the day. Look at our planner forecast in Yonkers today. Fair amount of clouds to start off the day. A few little hints of sun. Temperatures will be close to about the lower 80s into the afternoon with that humidity really not going anywhere just yet. But look at our clouds and radar our map really mostly dry across the Hudson Valley now outside of a stray little light passing rain shower, even just some drizzle in extreme eastern Putnam and Dutchess counties. There is no more heavy rain, though, expected as we go throughout the day. Perhaps a little bit of a spotty rain shower can pop up at any point into the afternoon and into the evening hours. Look at our future cast here, but breaks of sun. Otherwise, mostly cloudy to partly sunny skies into the afternoon. Highs close to 80 degrees, but again, just a spotty rain shower possible into the afternoon and early evening. But we don't expect any additional flooding from additional rainfall, just the lingering impacts that we have now across the Hudson Valley, which are bad enough, as we well know. Just keep an umbrella with you today, though, for a spotty shower, partly sunny to mostly cloudy near 80, dressed comfortably with that high humidity. And the beach and boat forecast actually pretty good overall today. So it is a day that if you want it, if you can get out and about across the Hudson Valley to head down to the water, conditions will be fine. Partly cloudy skies overnight tonight, lows in the upper 50s to lower and middle 60s and the humidity will come down a little bit for the overnight hours. Here's the extended stretch. No major washouts from this point forward. However, nice pair of dry days tomorrow and most of Wednesday, but the heat does crank up starting tomorrow back in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. High humidity through the extended stretch with a spotty thunderstorm possible, not washouts Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. All right, it is just about 6.09 in the morning, and we want to tell you about more road closures to Rockland now. A section of the Palisades closed in both directions because of flooding. Our Jade Nash is in the area of Cedar Flats, that section of Stony Point. We're going to have live reports for you there all morning long. We also want to let you know about closures in Orange County. Routes 218 and 9W shut down in and around the West Point area. This is some of the most severe flooding that I have seen in my career. Flooding also washing away some of 218. That's to blame for those closures. So stay with News 12 throughout our morning for live updates. Well, several Rockland County business owners are now recovering after a fire tore through a local strip mall. What we know now as officials investigate that fire. Plus, a second chance at life for New Yorkers convicted of a crime. We're breaking down the Clean Slate Act. You're watching News 12 where local matters.